I be on there with Judah sometimes. I be on there with Yawa South. Yeah, he's East Coast. All crazy, yeah. man. It's crazy how the most high connect people. Man. Yeah, oh yeah. He's definitely increasing mm -hmm. wisdom in the last day. Mm -hmm. What's your uh, current stance in theology? What you mean? Like, you wish your theological position? To so come to God, like, what's I'm a follower of Christ, Yeshua. Okay. Without non denomination, non Catholic, non denomination. I don't rock with. I, I don't rock with faith, faith alone, grace alone, none of that. Faith and grace. Yeah, faith and I, I believe that a person is saved by faith and grace, but not faith alone. I believe that everywhere you see the word faith, it denotes obedience. Dead. In Christ. In hey. Christ. Yeah. You know, talking about faith without works yeah. is dead. Yeah, James too. I feel like that's the most important thing because that's how you take God for granted is feeling like you can be stagnant in regards to what He told you to do. Right. But everything that he ever set in motion it was done with the actions of men being the example why do you think that it's taught for us to be so stacked like what do you think the benefit is in that like you feel like there's an agenda behind that oh yeah definitely what do you think the agenda is hey how you brothers doing we good man we good man we good. hey give us up if you can i want to talk to you about the answer behind that question right there who know the answer hey real quick I used to, yeah, you still man. take the, 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 the view of that veil that was ripped. Uh -huh. You the real still right? take the position that the Gentiles, you know what I'm saying, are all of the nations. Yeah, I still? believe that I believe that all nations can be saved. I believe that in Christ that all nations can have the same benefits and blessings sorry, sorry, and salvation as every other person through faith. I believe that the Israelites, if you if you if you're a physical Israelite, I believe that you gotta come through through, through faith in Christ. And if you're a non-Israelite, you have to be saved by that same grace and that same faith in Christ and obedient or and obey the gospel. Got you, got you, got you. How um how good are your skills in Greek and Hebrew? Um I mean, I know, I know some, but my thing is context is king. So, absolutely. So, for the people that I do know that are avid in Hebrew and Greek, I'm, I'm a more contextual person. So, yeah, yeah. a person might understand and know more Greek and Hebrew than me um, in certain aspects, but I can read the context, and the context determines what, what the uh, initial intent or position of the particular author. 100%. So, when it comes to context, I'm going to run through the context. Hebrew, Greek word, whatever. Baptism means immerse, submerge. The way I know which baptism that's talking about is by looking at the context and comparing scripture with scripture. You guys would say precept upon precept. So to precept that, I can get the understanding of that. Without knowing Greek or Hebrew, I can still get an understanding of what he's talking about. I will, I will say this, because mm -hmm. I agree with context, but context means with the text. And if you can't follow the text, mm -hmm. you can't really read it. Like you can look at the translation, but then would you agree that every translation is subject to uh, the religion that's that that person who translated is inspired by the, like, the theological ideology? Yeah, like take King James, for example, he was Anglican. Mm -hmm. So you see some Anglican principles in his translation. Mm -hmm. So I believe that that is something that's a challenge that a lot of us aren't ready to meet. Mm -hmm. What about prophecy? How you feel about prophecy? Um, prophecy matters, of course. Prophecy and the way we know about the, the way we know what a prophecy is talking about is based upon the fulfillment of that prophecy. Um, and we have to keep that prophecy in context as well. And whatever your interpretation of that prophecy is, it cannot contradict the apostles' doctrine or the doctrine that came through the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Boom. But what I want to do is, though, I want to I want to stick on one topic, and I want us to focus on that one topic. Yeah. So he asked me the topic of who can be saved, right? Yeah, yeah, or Gentile nations. I want to deal with that. And let's let's work with that particular doctrine, and then we can let's start there. And if y'all want to meet up with me again and have another dialogue with me, y'all yeah. can get my number or whatever. Yeah, but good. right now, let's deal with that. Let's take a so, few minutes to deal with that right quick. So yeah, let me get First Peter two and nine. I want you to break down on on this. I'll let you exegete it for yourself. Mm -hmm. By the way, man, my name is Sire. Yeah. Definitely, man. Nice to meet. Yeah, they call me One K, but my name's Steve. Steve. Yes, sir. First Peter what? First Peter 2 and 9. I want to read it in two chapters. That's fine. Um, I want to get it in the ESV and the KJV because I believe that they're, they're radically different enough to get a good objective view. That way we're not biased in our interpretation. Yeah, we're going to read the 
KJV first? If you rather wait for us. Context, I don't is regardless of what text. King James, NIV, ESV, LSB, however y'all rock, I'm going to the context. You know what I'm saying? You want us to wait till you got it to do it or No, you good. Okay. I done been there. You know how to been there. I done been there. Yeah. It says um I don't have my Bible, so I'm just trying to I'm in I'm in my yeah, I'm in this. So I'm just trying to mark it. So I'll be so I can rock with y'all. Uh, this is uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priest. Pause right there. You are a chosen nation, mm -hmm. a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. So we'll be describing this as a criteria. Go ahead. A holy nation, a particular people, that ye shall show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvel light. Marvelous light now. Peter was sent to the circumcision. We know that. Is he describing the circumcision or what, who is he talking to here what? when he says this? Mm -hmm. So when he when he talks about the royal priesthood, he's talking about followers of Christ. The chosen nation. Yeah. So the chosen nation, so you had the nation of Israel, right? But Christ came with his own kingdom and his own nation. It was a spiritual nation. So so that's not to uproot or take away from the physical nation that originally was, but God's full order, God's full order was to unite all people in one in one Messiah, which was Yeshua. So what God was doing initially with through Christ was undoing what was done by Adam. Adam brought sin into the world. Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, those were not Israelites. So all so he gave a promise, Galatians chapter three, to to um to Israel. Before the Israelites, there were there, there was I'm, I'm sorry to Abraham, which predated the law by 430 years. And Paul explicitly states that in Galatians chapter three, that promise that he gave 430 the law that came 40, 30, 430 years after does not negate or invalidate the promise that he gave, which was to unite all nations under one nation through the Messiah. So the promise of Abraham, you said everybody inherits that through Christ, so, through faith in Christ, Galatians 3. So what about the promise that says, he shall possess the gate of his enemies? Where, where, where does that fall into your world? I mean, that, that has happened. The the enemy, the enemy. it depends on what the context is. You have to show me that context. So, so I'll show you the context. It's a yeah. bigger prophecy. Get Numbers 24. And I know it's kind of going to get in hella detail, but I look at criteria for the process of elimination. Like any good detective, you want to use the process of elimination yeah. because, mm -hmm. you know, the probability of something that, that you might think is there doesn't matter if it don't end up happening. So this is how I defeated my bias because I, I came from a Christian position. So Numbers 24 is 17. And I want you to tell me when this happened. I shall see him, but not now. I shall see him, but not now. Mm -hmm. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. Who's that scepter? Uh, probably referring to Christ. All right. Yes, you. Right. So now, this is where it gets strange for me. One, when I came from my Christian position, and then I began to chip away from here. Go ahead. And shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheph. That, that Sheph, that's a translation that comes from Seth. You know how everybody comes from Seth, who was raised up in the place of Abel, who came his food. So they're saying everybody that comes from Seth, he's gonna, he's gonna have a problem with. He's gonna beat them down as well. All those nations. When did that happen? Um, that happened many times where where nations fell. No, ba no, no. Babylon. Christ. Christ. No, no. What, right. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, through. Christ, remember in Colossians chapter 2 when it says he overthrew all rules and pressure powers, etc. in Colossians chapter 2. I believe that what Christ did was he he disintegrated all of the enemies of God's people when it comes to the principalities and the powers that be. But I don't know, I don't know if that particular prophet, and, and like I said, regardless of what your interpretation of that prophecy is, we still have to keep it in, in context of what the Messiah said in the New Testament. And my, my standpoint is Israel slew their king. Israel slew their prophets. So we want to hold anybody accountable for anything. Oh, the, the people who should be most accountable, which Peter preached in Acts chapter 2, he said, you, speaking to his people, when all the nations of Israel came, the Jews, devout men from every nation, when they came on the day of Pentecost, he said, you slayed your king, your Messiah, who actually came to save you. 
So we can talk about the enemies of Israel, but Israel became an enemy of God when they, first of all, disrespected the law and didn't keep the law. That's why a new covenant had to come in the first place. So they needed the same grace as all the other nations. And just, just whether you're a physical Israelite or whether you're a Gentile or whatever, you have to come through Christ through faith. If not, you're an enemy of God. The Bible says you walk as enemies as the cross of Christ. He was speaking to those who rejected Christ. I agree. And but so we, I unite all of them. But we want to break down this, this prophecy. Like, I don't want to I, I don't want to convolute this. I got you. Because holistically, mm -hmm. we both agree that that's talking about Christ where it says a separate. I would I would think it is. I would think it is. When, when they talk about because a lot of the old testament was pointing toward the time of Christ. But at the same time, we have to keep it in in order to get the best understanding of it, we have to keep it in context of the New Testament because the New Testament, the, the apostle said, the New Testament, what they had then, the mystery that all Gentiles, that the Gentiles can be saved, Paul literally says that's the mystery that angels long to look. It says that the things in the New Testament, everybody from the Old Testament was trying to figure out what that was talking about. Christ said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the Paraklatos, to you, and he's going to lead you into all truth and reveal that which they, that wasn't revealed before. So when Christ was walking around, it wasn't fulfilled yet. So he was speaking in parables. He wasn't giving it to it. When the Holy Spirit came, the apostles laid down what the full picture is. And for, regardless of what you're and what your interpretation of that prophecy is, when I go to the New Testament, it says that all people can be saved and united in Christ. But, but, but what we have to look at is the qualifiers as well. And so what it comes down to eventually is if, if the New Testament is saying what we think it's saying, mm -hmm. the that stands right there, then it's contradicting the Old Testament prophecy. I don't now, think it is. The reason why it's important, why it's important to reapproach the way we look at the New Testament. Depending on how you turn a telescope, that's how big or small the vision of what's to come is going to be, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at it, looking from the New Testament backwards, things seem a lot further off than they actually are, which is why Christ said, you actually believed in Moses, meaning the book of Moses. Book of me. So, yeah, exactly. yeah. so you don't have a good view of Christ unless you're actually looking at it from the other way around. Right? So that's why we approach it this way. But I want to go back into that Numbers 24 and 17, and we're just going to re-walk it down because, you know, you had said something that's interesting. But I don't think the Old Testament, the old, in the Old Testament, they didn't know who the Messiah was, and they didn't have a full understanding of that. Until the Messiah actually came, they still didn't know who he was. They didn't even accept him. They, they, they were looking for David and Galit, a Gideon type, Joshua type man. He came humble and meek. What about the ones that tried to make him kick? Yeah, so them, they might have they might have understood certain things, but at some point they didn't understand. Even his apostles were like, "Well, at, will you restore the kingdom now at this time?" And he was like, "You you are knowing your time." So 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 when Christ was there, the apostles didn't even know. When the Holy Spirit came, Paul wrote in Colossians chapter one. He has he has taken us from the darkness, the domain of darkness, and has transferred us present tense into his kingdom of his beloved son. And you saw Christ reigning as king then, spiritual king. I also think that it has a different meaning based on the text. But let's go back to Numbers 24 and 17. We'll walk down all these things. All right. I'm going to let y'all walk that down and just explain it. And then when y'all get done explaining, I'm going to take it in. And then I'm gonna, I just want to point out a couple verses in uh, in the New Testament. Okay. Go. But I'm going to ask you a couple questions about this. I got you. Too. I might not understand everything, point what you want. No, so that's good. That's how building go. You know, all right. we go back to the drawing board. We yeah, that's fine. To. Yeah. You know, we brothers, we got time for that. Right. Yeah. It says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall be a star out of Jacob, and a scepter oh, shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all of the children of Sheth. And Edom shall be a possession. possession. Seir also shall be a possession. For the enemies of Israel shall be valiant. Israel shall do valiantly. So what we see is Christ is leading a uh, militant operation where the Israelites are doing valiantly and then we start to possess the children of Edom and their territory. When Didn't they, they do that? Nah, it says Christ. So no, Christ, I'm saying, but Christ can do that, but Christ, which is God, can do that not necessarily directly in the physical form, but he can do that through his spirit moving in. So when, when you look at this number, this way back, when you look at the captivities that they went through and the, the nations that have been brought down, 
it was God doing that through the using of Israel in the midst of that. Right. Babylon, Assyria, it's actual stuff. Babylon, Assyria, Persia, Rome fell. Like, so, Christ did it. It doesn't mean that he did it physically. So you asked the question, you said, in the, in the New Testament. Testament. Yeah. The answer is no. Here's the criteria. We have to smash Moab. Now, what we have record of is that David subdued Moab. So that's one in favor of your theory, which right. is good. The next one is possessing Edom and possessing their land. We had a partial of that fulfilled when David conquered the Edomites. And what we did was we ruled over them by putting garrisons in their land, but we didn't take their land for possession. So that's the difference. But what if that means, this, what if that prophecy is meaning the same thing, but just not in the exact way that you're taking it? Well, it don't because it says Christ is going to be a part of that. He's going to be He was a part of that. Christ was present. So Christ, Christ is Christ ruling in the world right now? Yes. So he's not ruling physically in the world, but spiritually he's a king right now. There you go. So this is talking about a spiritual goings on where he's going to lead something where Israel is going to be valiant. Under they did. His leadership. They did. They was under the leadership of God in the Old Testament. No, no, brother. It says before Christ manifested in him, it says, himself in the flesh. It says it's a far off, and it says that was far. That was hundreds of years later. It says a scepter is going to rise out of Israel. Christ would not have been ruling during the time that David was ruling. Got it. Because David was promised that Christ would be brought to his seat, right? Mm -hmm. So that that's a contradiction in that logic to where we have to submit that this is Christ in the future. And it says that point we're going to possess Edom and their land. How do we know that this is something that has to happen? Because Amos the ninth chapter talks about it as well. Now Amos is not going to prophesy that it has to happen if it's passed already, unless it's something that was going to happen more than once. We can agree that some prophecies. Amos are, is old though. Amos is old, but he's after numbers. Right, but I'm saying there was things that happened when when Amos and all of those prophets were were prophesying. They were prophesying in the midst of these, right, in right. the far off, in the far off numbers, Persia and Babylon. All that stuff happened hundreds of years later, but that didn't happen right then. So that could be a far off, but not before numbers, right? Yeah, not before numbers. Yeah. I'm just saying. A far off can mean 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, 400 years. It doesn't necessarily have to mean in 2021 or 2022. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Yeah. What I'm saying is that we have numbers giving us one prophecy, mm -hmm. and then hundreds of years later, we have Amos giving us the same prophecy, meaning that we need to project it further down the line than we would have originally thought. Now, you mentioned something that's very important, which is unless the Israelites repent and come through Christ, then they still going to be trashed at the end of the day, which right. is why I want right. to segue real quick just to prove my point. But we can still make it just about numbers. Get Amos 9 and 9 real quick. If you read it in the Septuagint, they do a little bit more theology behind their interpretation. And they say it's because... You know, they're calling a special people out from the nations so that one day everybody can turn to God. We agree, everybody's gonna have no choice but to turn to God one day. But God will always have one chosen people. Now, how can I say this? I believe that. I, I can start with not everybody's gonna be the chosen people of God because God is saying that he's gonna cause his people to possess an entire people group. And here's the evidence. Go ahead, bring it up. 99. Yeah. This is Amos 99 for low. I will command that I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like the corn is sifted from the sheep. Yet shall not one grain fall among the earth, upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. So all the sinners of Israel will die by the sword, period. So we agree there. Go ahead. Would say evil shall not overtake me nor preserve us, prevent us. Sorry. Uh, verse 11. And that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David. So the tabernacle of David is where we start to talk about rulers of the dominion. The whole point of the tabernacle of David as a structure is it indicates unity. Now, it's obscure in the New Testament when we approach it from the common Christian lens, which is that everybody is a part of this kingdom. And what they do is... Not necessarily. Well, when you talk about to most people, you know what I'm saying? It. Everybody's not just a part of it. You have to, you get a I mean, part of it through faith. Be, right? You get a part of it through faith and obedience to Christ. So, so everybody. So that, that that's that's kind of the, the view I'm addressing, right? What they do is they make the kingdom a place. No, the kingdom is a people. The citizens of the kingdom, it's a spiritual kingdom. It's not an earthly kingdom. Well, so, we got to address that as well. Because it says that 
they reign in the earth. When yeah. You're in Revelation. No, right? I got you. So let, let, let's just finish this right go here. Go ahead. Yeah, finish that. Go ahead. Uh, and that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. The, king, the new kingdom, the dominion that's formed after the tabernacle of David where Israel is united because they're divided at this point, right? Under David, they were united. And under Solomon, they were united. Afterwards, they broke apart. So that's the unity that takes place. Gotcha. So the tabernacle of David is going to do what? And close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build in it as in the old, sorry, in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. That they may possess what? The remnant of Edom. And what? And all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord. Now in Revelation, we're familiar with Jesus is wearing ten crowns, and the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. Now when we look at it from the Christian point of view, it's a friendly thing that's voluntary. But here we look at it and it's a military conquest where we possess the remnant of Edom and all of the heathen which are called by name. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus is called the conquering lion. Why? Because he, because he overcame. Yeah, he and, overcame death. He overcame. He's just not conquering people. That's not how Christ came. Okay, so what does the blood on his garment signify when he's wearing that white robe that's soaked in blood? Is that figurative blood or is that in Revelation? Mm -hmm. I believe that that's figurative. You think it's figurative? Yeah, so, Revelation is a figurative book. It was written in apocalyptic language. So watch this, Isaiah sixty-three, real quick. I'm, I'm not trying to make too many points, but yeah, because I, I like want to go, I want to stick on who can be saved and get. Because you're showing what what you're. If I correct me if I'm wrong, what you're in an attempt to doing is saying is that through these Old Testament prophecies, that basically is what excludes other nations. Yeah, 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 because. We see in the Old Testament prophecies that everybody's going to worship God, but it's still something where they're being juxtaposed from the Israelites. The Israelites are always prophesied that they're going to be a light to the nations, but the heathen have a role that does not, it's not a role of leadership. But well, what is a heathen though? A heathen, a heathen just means nation. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, but what makes you a heathen? Can an Israelite be a heathen? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So what but makes an Israelite a non-heathen? We're talking about literally other nations. Like we read I got it, you. I'm, I'm, I'm addressing the okay. question. So when we read Amos 9, it said the mm -hmm. sinners of my people shall die by the sword. Mm -hmm. That's talking about Israelites that choose to be heathen. 70 AD, so, so, destruction of Jerusalem, all that. They, they were overcome. Before that, they were swallowed up. They failed in different ways there you go. throughout time. So, so that doesn't negate Israel. It just means some people who's of Israel going to have to get that. They're going to have to get that. They're going to have to get they that. They didn't make it in. They're going to have to get that doo-doo bag. They're going to have to get shot up. They're going to have to get death by pain according to the scriptures but it doesn't negate Jerusalem Israel that happened in 87 yeah, they were happen. slaughtered it's gonna happen again too because that's just the punishments that come on guys people when they disagree but to answer you yes Israelites can be heathen but there are literal heathen and so we're not well, what makes them a literal heathen so look, let's look for example when you look at Isaiah the first and second chapter it says right. the law is gonna go forth out of Jerusalem within that law Isaiah too. There you go. Yeah. When you look at that law, you can't oppress an Israelite. You can't have an Israelite as slaves, yet the, the heathen are going to be slaves, it says. It says they're going to be servants and handmaids. So we have the distinguishing factors right there where we know that there's going to be a punishment for the Israelites, but ultimately what's going to happen is there eventually will be a successful nation led by them. But let's go ahead and get Isaiah 63. Real, real quick, that Isaiah 2. Uh -huh. That Isaiah 2. I believe that that, that that prophecy was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. You think so? so? Yeah, I'm going to tell you why. So it says, um, in Isaiah 2, it says, now, now it will be that in the last days, the mountain of the house of Yahweh will be established as the, high, as the head of the mountains and will be lifted up above the hills and all the nations will stream to it or flow to it. And many people will come and say let us go to the house of uh, God uh, to the house of the God of Jacob that we may instruct us that he may instruct us uh, from his ways and that we may walk in his paths from from Zion the law will go forth and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem and he will judge between the nations and will render decisions for many people and they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation and never again will they be war. And you said so, that happened when in Acts so, 2? Yeah, so in Acts, so let's, let's, go, let's, let's go to the front stage, right? So in Acts chapter 2 and verse 17, Paul, uh, Peter, when he spoke, he specifically said that this is that 
that was prophesied by the prophet uh, Joel. Joel that in the last days. So, so the Holy Spirit. Part. So yeah. So Joel, but so Joel, the fact is that when Peter was was talking, he considered that their time was this last days that Joel was talking about in the last days. Where the Holy so he, Spirit would be right. Out. That's what specifically he's talking about. But I'm just saying last days. This talk about in the last days as well, right? Mm -hmm. In Isaiah chapter two and a lot of the other prophecies that you guys go to talk about last days. But Peter said that this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel that in the last days. So that means two thousand years ago, Peter considered them in the last days. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you had all nations flowing to Jerusalem. All na you had all you nations of Jews. Right? Acts 2. You show, had show us that. Yeah. Let's bring it out according to Acts 2 because yeah. you said context, right? Yeah, yeah. Of it course. says Jews came out of yeah, all no, nations. but I'm saying nations, yeah. But I want to see the other nations coming as well. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, that that had the, to the Jew the the, the message of faith was to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So the Jew, when, when Christ came, he came to his own, mm -hmm. but his own did not receive him. But in Acts 2, it doesn't describe mm -hmm. other people coming and just saying, Jew. Not, so No, yeah, at that Jewish. point, yeah, no, but I'm saying at that point, yes. But when you, you have to look at all of the scriptures. Okay. So at that point, yes. But when you look at Cornel, when you look at the household of Cornelius, and then when you look at the other people and you look at the, the church of Ephesus, you see all these other nations coming in. But hold on. So, and so, but, but I wonder if there's something else in Isaiah chapter two, he says, they will never again be war. And then he says, and then he says, they're going to, at this time, they're going to turn their swords into pruning hooks. So the people, when you seen Christ coming, he didn't come as a mighty warrior. He didn't tell his apostles. He said, man, put your sword down. You live by, you die by, right? When Paul came, he says, vengeance is mine, I will repay you. He but on the contrary, bless those who hate you. So you see this law and this prophecy being enacted as they walk. They wasn't walking around like, rah. They was walking around like, hey, look, we being persecuted. Be humble, stay humble. Those who persecute y'all pray for them. That's, that's what Isaiah 2 was talking about. Keep that thought. He also said, if this was my kingdom, my people would fight for me, right? Yeah, if my kingdom was of this world. There you go. Yeah. Because this it wasn't the time and place for it. I don't think that was his point. Well, I'll show you. His because kingdom was spiritual in nature. I, I, I'll show you because we, we harping down on these set of prophecies that indicate a certain actions that's going to take place. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 63 is going to illustrate what Revelations is talking about. But there's other prophecies that talk about this same event in a different time, in a different place, where Christ is doing one act, one thing of the conqueror we're going to be doing another and it says some of it's going to be done by the hand of his people israel mm -hmm. now um if you went to acts 2 and i don't want to ignore it because it's a good point yeah acts 2 right i want you to go ahead and read that real quick so in acts 2 it says and when the days of pentecost had fully come they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like violent wind right and it talks about um uh, the cloven tongues rested on each one of them and it says in verse 5 now there were Jews living in Jerusalem Devout men from every nation under heaven and when this sound occurred the multitude came together and were bewildered or confused yeah. Because they were speaking in their own language and then he lists all the nations that were there uh, The people that were from those nations Parthians, Medes, Elamites, That's residents right. of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, visitors from Rome both Jews and proselytes. Both Jews and proselytes were there. We were and proselytes. Somebody who from another nation that adopts the, the Jewish ways or the Jewish customs. It, it just, who come in. It just means cover. It just, Strangers. It just means newcomer. That's all proselytes. Mean. Yeah, but they wasn't Israelites. A proselyte was not an Israelite. Are you sure? Yes. So, so you can't convert an Israelite? Convert an Israelite to Israel? Yeah, can an Israelite come from a far off nation? Like in, what I'm the, in the original, in the original, in the original text, when he told, when he gave the command about proselytes, all those people that were around him were Israel, and they were not scattered abroad yet. Okay, well, they were good. all Israelites when he told y'all about the strangers in the law. So when you deal he with, he wasn't that, talking about the Israelites. So when right you there. deal with the Hellenistic period, are you familiar with what happened when Alexander the Great came on the scene? But this way before that though, no, the proselytes. No. Romans, Romans don't exist unless Greeks exist first. It was the Greek captivity. No, I'm talking then, about proselyte. The right, word right. proselyte. Right. What I'm saying is that the concept of proselyte exists to describe somebody that comes from afar. So the way I'm addressing it is saying that Israelites can come from afar because we were scattered. Your position is that they, they were not. They were all in not the in, Not in the old. No, I'm saying when, when Moses gave the law. I'm talking about the New Testament, the proselytes. Right. And I'm saying that You're saying that that's something different. Proselytes. You're saying if that. If you want to. But I'm saying. That may be true, but that doesn't negate the fact that the original order of it was non-Israelite. What you mean? 
when he gave that law, he wasn't talking about Israelites. He was talking about non-Israelites. What law? The law of Moses. No, the no, law no. of God. Like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where that ties in with proselyte. The strangers. When he talked about the strangers and sojourners, and that's in the law. That's in the Torah. Is that saying they could become Israelites? They can they can be amongst his people as proselytes. They will consider proselytes. Okay. But in the but in you know the New saying? Testament, it, they could become Judaized. That's the word for it. Like you read Esther, the eighth chapter, it talks about how all the people of the land became Jews for fear of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with that? It, it say what now? In the book of Esther, it says all the people of the land became Jews for fear of the Jews. Right. So to become a Jew is a concept that can help us to properly approach the concept of proselytization mm -hmm. versus other phraseologies that might indicate some type of conversion. Right. Right. So if I look at that using the Septuagint, for example, where it says the people became Jews, it says they became Judea. That's just in the Greek. When I read it in the Hebrew, it says they became Yahad, meaning they converted religiously. So what I'm saying is if we're going to talk about a stranger, they would be Judaized. They're never called proselytos. So what I'm saying is that we don't look at the Old Testament and we can't say that strangers are an example of proselytization. Right? We cannot qualify that. Can a Jew become a stranger? Yes, absolutely. That's what so I'm why saying. can't it be the other way around? Well, no, I'm just saying, like, for example, they talk about spiritual, spiritual Jews, spiritual Israelite. I believe a person can become a spiritual Israelite okay. the same way you believe a person can become a spiritual Gentile. So, so how what? How can you become a spiritual Israelite? Like through faith it, in Christ. Is it thorough? Like you all the way Israelite? No, Israelite? not physical. No, no, no. I mean like thoroughly. Um, let's use not bloodline wise. Of, let's use the idea of joint heirs, right? Mm -hmm. Do you inherit the same promises the Israelite has if you become a spiritual Israelite? Yes, and I you, believe so. And you do that by becoming I believe you circumcised, get, keeping the law. No, no. Okay, how do you become That's a spiritual not the Israelite? Testament. Through faith and obedience in Christ. What about in the Old Testament? Because you have to be a part of Israel. And you have to be circumcised. Okay. You have to be in order to be a. That's what I'm saying. He said, "The time is coming where I will make a new covenant, not like the one I made with your fathers, which they broke. But in that time, I will, I will put my laws in their heart, in their minds, etc." So in the old, you're uh, the old. That's what I'm saying. You can't apply a old covenant, old testament, fleshly standpoint to a now new spiritual, Holy Spirit filled, actualized version of what all those things were pointing to. I'm just giving us a compare and contrast. So so what I'm asking you is in the Old Testament, this is how you become a spiritual Israelite. But in the New Testament, this is how you become a spiritual Israelite. No. In the in the Old Testament, you're an Israelite through bloodline. And you become a part of the covenant through circumcision in the Old Testament right. and through following the law. That's that's the old way that's of becoming the old a way. spiritual Israelite, right? That's that, that's the old way. That's yeah, right. that, yeah. So, so but what, in the New what, Testament, in the New real, Testament. Real quick, before you get that far, go ahead. Because I'm trying to understand you more than I'm trying to talk at you. I got you. So when you become a spiritual Israelite according to the Old Covenant, are you a joint heir? Are you treated equally with the Israelites? Yes. And in the New Testament, in the New you Testament, yes. Same as well, right? No. In the New Testament, I believe that you have the same spiritual blessings and the same spiritual the in ephesians chapter one it says all spiritual blessings come from being in christ right. in ephesians chapter two he talks to the gentiles at that church and says at one time you were you were those of you who were far off you were without hope you were without god in this world strangers to the covenant and he says but now you have become joint but now you have been united with the people of God through faith. What, what I'm trying to get a look at is when we apply it in real life, in the Old Testament, this is how you become a spiritual Israelite. And then we have a new way to practice. I wouldn't say spiritual. Does it say spiritual Israelite? Well, it don't say it nowhere, but I'm just using, we're using it to it describe the spirit. It, do, it says spirit. It don't say spiritual Israelite. Well, that's, that's just a word no, we use in but, this but, Right, but what I'm saying is when the Bible says a Jew is not one outwardly but one inwardly. That just means that, that being being a Jew on the inside isn't enough. And being a, no, he's no, saying, no, being a Jew on the outside, the outside isn't, isn't enough. enough. Keeping certain customs ain't enough because Jew, what does it even mean? It means his praise. So you can't just praise God on the outside with what you do. It's on the inside and that's just a matter of the spirit. But we don't want to get too far. Yeah, but I believe I'm he's talking about the bloodline right what? there, though, when he says you're not just a Jew on the outside. He's talking about their bloodline. And that's why Paul said, he says, um, he says, I'm a, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrew. I'm a Pharisee to the law blameless. I did this, and my, my mom and dad are Pharisees. But those things would I count 
was gained to me or profitable for me in that way I now count loss not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law but through faith exactly so, so that's spiritual is, so but that's the spiritual is like that I'm talking about okay so so I'm trying to mm -hmm. I'm trying to allow us to have a foundation that we can stand on mm -hmm. that allows us to measure an Israelite Right. So you. in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. is circumcision and following of the laws that allows you to be treated as Israel by the Gentiles, or is it, you by believe God. different? In the Old Testament? Yeah, yeah. Say that. Say that part. Again. So in the Old Testament, if you're a Gentile, the way that you become an Israelite is being circumcised in the proselyting the law. process. Yeah, the, basically. As far as I, that's your view. Um, you can't become no physical you can't become a physical Israelite. But a spiritual you could be a part you could be a part of the people but uh, to a to a sense, but you still consider a, you still consider a Gentile. Like a heathen. Yeah, you still consider a Gentile. That's what I'm but saying. But in the New Testament in the New Testament, when it speaks of Gentiles, uh -huh. um I'm sorry, in the New Testament those considered Gentiles or those who consider heathen are any is any nation. Any person, one person, he's not judging as a nation, he's judging individuals in their heart. That's right. God is not, God, the, the Bible says you, uh, they won't be punished for the sins of their father, but each person will give account for their own sins. Mm. So in the New Testament, each person that accepts Christ is on God's side. Anybody that doesn't accept Christ in the ways of Christ through faith is a heathen and is a Gentile. So that brings me back to our initial point in First Peter, right? Mm -hmm. You said you can't become a physical Israelite. Not physically, not by bloodline. No, you either are or you're not. So your race don't change. Yo, no. Let me get First Peter two and nine in the ESV. Because when you read that word generation, what is that? What is that uh, connotation? It like, just depends on the context. I got to look at the context. So generation is um, mean your blood, like your your people or who you belong to. Mm -hmm. But so, you so. have to you have to get that context from it. This is out the ESV. This is First Peter two and nine. But you are a chosen race. You said we can't change races. Yeah. Go ahead. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people mm -hmm. for his own possession, mm -hmm. that they might proclaim the excellency for him, of him, sorry. Who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light? So the prophecy talks about a marvelous light coming in a time where gross darkness is covering everybody else. But the glory of God shines on a particular people, and then the people then in turn come to that light that those people hold. And I think that it would behoove us to heart more on the prophecy that you were good enough to bring out in Isaiah the second chapter, where you said the law will flow forth out of Jerusalem. And that's key because you said you believe it was fulfilled in the book of Acts chapter 2. But we yeah, don't Isaiah, yeah, I believe that that was pointing toward the time of the apostles in Christ. But we see more of what Joel prophesied, which is the Holy Spirit beginning to be distributed. The reason why it's important to look. We see Jerusalem, we see the place, mm -hmm. and we also see all nations but we don't see, will flow to it. We don't see all nations flowing to Jerusalem. We see Jews from every nation flowing to it. But what we got to look at the and greater deal. But we see the greater deal is that other nations are after, or need to come to Jerusalem as well. Right? Other nations need to come to Jerusalem as well. And there's a time and a place for that. Mm -hmm. Now, Isaiah 2 talks about a salvation for Israel where they are established in the top of the mountains. Then people begin to come up. It talks about... It didn't say Israel. Yeah, dude, watch this. It, it, in it, Isaiah 2? It talks about Zechariah as well. It says, you know what I'm saying? In Isaiah 2? In Isaiah 2, it talks about the house of the Lord being established yeah. on the top of the mountains. Yeah. Right? In Zechariah, the 8th chapter, it talks about this as well. And it, it, it describes when the Gentiles, Gentiles start to come up and follow the Jews to God, right? And it says 10 men out of all the nations and out of all the languages is going to take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew and say, we're going to go with you because that we have heard God is with you. Christ. Yeah. Why are, no, no, it's not talking about Christ. It's a plural. When you look at it in the Hebrew, it's a plural. So essentially it's saying we're going to go with y'all because God is with y'all. Yeah. So if, if with those who believe the Jew, like again, it was to the Jew first. It was to the Jews. They 
they received, the apostles and the Israelites, physically speaking, received the will of God through the Holy Spirit first. All the other nations, when they went and preached, the Bible says, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Every creature. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. So we got to do it all. All the creation, all people. We got to do it all the gospel. Now, the gospel has different parts of it. We have the spiritual matters, which is being forgiven for sins. We have the deliverance of Israel from out of the hand of their enemies. When you go preach that to another nation, what do they need to do so Israel can be delivered from all the nations? Because we have the spiritual part down where we know that if you confess your sins, if you follow Christ, right? We have that, but what does that have to do with the other nations? And how do they see to it that they're fulfilling that aspect of prophecy? All they have to do is, that? yeah, let me, can I point it out? Can I make it plain? Yeah, so in, in, in Romans chapter 5, this is just one area. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For while we were still weak at the right, now he's saying weak, so Paul saying weak. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man, someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more, having now been justified by his blood. So he, he just, not justified by the law, but justified by his blood. We shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. How would they reconcile? Not through a bloodline, but through through uh, through the death of his son. Much like more. Hold on, I'm not done yet. No, no, you good. Okay, okay. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only this, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we now receive uh, receive the reconciliation. So Paul speaking of Paul speaking reconciliation. When, yeah, reconcile or reconciliation. So to be brought back to God, whatever whatever issue that they had with God, it was now reconciled through faith in Christ let's and through the blood of Christ. Done, no, I got you. you so yeah, so that's verse uh, eleven of Romans five. Mm -hmm. So now, so now, I, I believe, based upon the context that the Rome, the church at Rome, Ephesus, Philippi consisted of both Israelites and non-Israelites who accepted Christ through faith and obedience to Christ through obe obedience to gospel. So when he says we, because you can see how Paul mentions Jews, and what well, he's specifically speaking to Jews in, in Romans, and then he also says, but now to you Gentiles, right? So I believe that when he's dealing with the Gentiles that he's talking about non-Israelites, but that's neither here nor there. Verse 12, I want us to see this. Because, yeah, Romans chapter five, verse 12 and following. So so the, the initial issue that God in the, the original prophecy before before the prophecies that you went to in Isaiah, before the prophecy of Daniel, the original prophecy was given to Adam and to the serpent, the curses, right? The curse and what was gonna happen. And Christ was going to destroy the works of the devil, which was death and sin, right? So Adam and Eve was not an Israelite. The ultimate goal of God was not just about physical Israel. The ultimate, that, hold on, that, let, that me, let me, let me, hold on, hold yeah, on. My bad, my bad. Hold that's, on. That's a, that's no, a real just packed this. term, though. Yeah. We want to go back to Yeah, that. so oh, he's he going to make it plain right here, though. He, he's going to make it plain right here in Romans 5. So in Romans chapter 5, what, but my point was the original plan was to undo what Adam did when he sinned, when Adam and Eve sinned, they did something. They brought sin into the world, and the Bible says death spread to all men because all have sinned, right? All, not just Israel, not just the heathen nations, all have sinned. So the ultimate plan of God was to send the Messiah to save the whole world and to unite all nations through one faith. Mm -hmm. This is what he promised Abraham. I'm going to make you a father of many nations, not just one nation, but many nations. And I believe that this is what's being laid out in Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Mm -hmm. It says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world mm -hmm. and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sin from Adam. Mm -hmm. So regardless if you got the law, or you as a heathen, or you as of Israel, because Israel was only chosen because through the bloodline of Israel, Judah, um, the, the the Messiah was to come. Mm -hmm. That's why they were set apart, right? So watch this: for until the law, sin was in the world, mm -hmm. right? Sin was in the world before the law, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses. This is before. 
the Israelite nations was established. Mm -hmm. Even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the trespass of Adam, who was a type of him was to come, who was to come, talking about Christ. But the gracious gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, talking about Adam, much more, how much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to many. So what is his point? And we're going to continue to read. Adam brought sin to all men because all have sinned, even before the law was given into the world, sin was in the world. And man needed to be reconciled and death spread to all men. So now he's saying if death and sin and death spread to all spiritual death and physical death spread to all men because of one sin how much more and how many more people can be saved through the blood of christ more than what adam did watch this so it says but the gracious gift is not like the transgression i'm, I'm sorry no you good but much more did the grace of god okay and the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned for on the one hand the judgment arose from one transgression resulting in condemnation but on the other hand the gracious gift arose Rose from many transgressions resulting in justification for if by the transgression of the one Adam death reigned through the one much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ so then as through one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men Adam even so through one act of righteousness the, the Christ who's way better than Adam the second Adam one act of righteousness there resulted justification of life to all men so the same way death spread to all men through adam paul saying life reconciliation all of the above is brought through obedience and faith in in christ for as though for as through the one man's disobedience, the many were appointed sinners adam Wait, he said what for all men Run that back a little bit. Reconciliation to Re God. Reconciliation. Because everybody needed reconciliation. Was everybody with God? Everybody wasn't with God. So reconciliation. No, but bring back, right? yeah. So no, this is what I'm saying. So at one point, God judged the nations differently. Remember, God was in the world and the lot, Abraham, Isaac. These are not Israelites. Mm -hmm. There was an Ishmaelites, Esau lights. All these other lights was in the world. Yeah before the law ever came but so I, and, I, I and, and with and so with israel with israel when the law came that law demanded absolute obedience israel failed that law they failed it and that's why israel had to be punished and israel had curses the bible says that christ became a curse for us all thereby we won't reap the penalty of that law and right here what paul's saying is just as sin and death entered through the one man adam Christ brought restoration for the entire world. Reconciliation. Reconciliation, etc. In what, this text, it's talking about reconciliation. What does reconciliation mean? To be to be reconciled, to be um, to be brought back on right standing with God. So you can be reconciled to somebody who you was with and became estranged. That too. Can you be reconciled to someone that you never was near to? The Gentiles were near to him. No, no, I'm asking. Enoch, I'm Abraham, I'm Isaac, I'm asking, Lot. I'm asking a, Adam. I'm asking a more direct question. So no, we can deal with language. No, I'm just saying. Can you be reconciled to someone you would never consile? Like consile means together, right? Like, but right. But here's the thing. All men, all men were undone. That's when Adam came into the world and sin. Death spread to all men, and therefore all men were doomed to death. So everybody was with God during Adam's. No, time. everybody wasn't with God. But well, Adam and his family was with God, but then they, they did something wrong, but God still operated them to some extent. Noah, no, all men were sinners. So, so what I'm asking you is, even without the law. Is there any time where everybody was with God? Um, I would say, no, not necessarily everybody, but everybody was doomed. So just because, just because, just be, even with the sacrifices, those sacrifices didn't cure everybody of their sins once and for all. It was all pointing to the biggest cure, which was the Messiah. The Messiah was everything. He said, y'all y'all read this Bible in the Old Testament and y'all think y'all have eternal life. Those scriptures speak of me. So the whole point of the Bible is not Israel. The whole point of the Bible is Christ. Israel was just a stopgap, but Israel came up short and they, and they were proving that regardless of what they had in God through the law, they still needed a savior just like the rest of mankind. What, or they were going to be doomed to a devil's hell what, too. What about the book of Chronicles? Is the book of Chronicles where it names all the tribes of Israel, the sacrifices they made, the way they set up their tents, was that about Christ? Or was it just records about what happened 
during those people's time? Well, the the law the law was pointing to a Christ. So okay. the Passover lamb pointed toward the ultimate Passover, which was Christ. The Sabbath rest was pointing toward the ultimate rest in Christ. Mm -hmm. The lamb, the, un the, the unblemished, spotted, uh, unspotted lamb was pointing to the unspotted lamb, which was Yeshua. Agreed. Agreed. The priesthood was pointed toward the high priest. Right. And we were the, we are the royal priesthood, not the high priest. You got the high priest Christ, and then right. you got the royal priesthood. But real quick, because the meter about to be up. Okay. And so what I'm asking you, yeah or nay, can we point to a time where everybody was with God? Sin entered into the world. So they might not have been at every, nobody was, nobody. Now you had Enoch and said he walked with God. Adam walked with God at some point. But this text right here says death spread to all men through Adam and all men sin. No, I so, agree with you. I agree. So that means everybody needs reconciliation. We're, we're, we're nailing that down, but we're not talking about who needs reconciliation. Mm -hmm. We're asking ourselves a critical question. Mm -hmm. Was everybody with God? And it seems like my answer Everybody's is seen. no. And yeah. your answer is no. Yeah, everybody was seen. Can we name a time where Israel was with God? Um, Israel was with God. And, and they went off too. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right? But we can, and, that, and that condemned them all. But we can name a time where they were with God, but we can't name a time where everybody was with God. And so we have these two things in our hands. They still needed a savior though. And, and I agree. I agree 100%. But what these are are solid objects, right? Mm -hmm. Solid facts. Mm -hmm. We don't see everybody with God. And we don't see Israel with God all the time. Right. But we see that Israel are the only ones that were with God. Now, I ask you a second question. It was in order to be reconciled. It the Bible, hold on. The Bible says that the Gentiles, uh, Paul mentions that the Gentiles will be, even though they didn't have the law, they were a law to themselves and they will be judged accordingly. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, they, they, so according to that, God... God judged them outside of the law of Moses. The law of Moses was given to Israel, so Israel was subject to their law, which they broke, which they were doomed, and which they had the curses. But if it wasn't for Christ, they would have been meeting the same thing, just as the other Gentiles. So the non-Israelites needed Christ, and the Israelites needed Christ. But look, look, we're talking about through the lens of Romans, which you just read, right? Reconcil I'm, just saying, I'm just saying the whole picture. Now you good, mm -hmm. but reconciliation is a word that was used and we yeah. read it in context but you don't get to use a word outside of its meaning and well the context gives its meaning well, the context the is context meaning. is reconciliation you said right that's not the context that's just one word the context is everything that he said uh, on camera you said in this case it's talking about reconciliation no on that on that on that first point when he says we were reconciled to god he's talking about reconciliation through faith in christ mm -hmm. to the Jew first and also to the greek so so reconciliation is not taking on a new meeting outside of what we understand it to mean which is to be brought back right yeah and so, everybody needs to be brought back so, even so, adam so look you said everybody wasn't with god nobody was you said israel was with god in the sense of he they were their chosen people but israel became condemned when israel fell short of that law so it's, and they were judged as so, a nation so it seems like other people need to be brought to god yeah yeah but israel's the only one that needs to be brought back to god give me amos three and one real quick because we just want to substantiate that mm -hmm. but you ain't you, you have an answer romans 5 either well, well well i am answering it but I'm you didn't answer where he says death spread to one man to one man and christ his righteousness was made to all men. We yeah, gotta yeah. look at we gotta look at that as well. I, I'm, I'm making my point about it because it okay. says reconciliation has come to all men, and I believe that it's important to look at what reconciliation and, and justification. Is. Yeah, justification so, as well. So if I'm but, reconciled and I'm justified, in Galatians three it says you are all sons of God through faith. Reconciled and justified is a criteria, right? You don't get to be one of those. You got to be both, right? Yeah, all of it. Anything that the New Testament says about justification, reconciliations, blessings, mm -hmm. so you, that's that's talking about those who accept Christ through faith. In order, Israelite first, and to the Greek as well. In order to be justified, you have to have faith in Christ, right? And, and obey that's the gospel. How you become justified by God and reconciled. So you can't break them apart and say you get to have one of these and fit the whole criteria. Is what I'm getting at. But get that Amos three and one, and then I'm gonna say um, my my reply to Romans five because he continues this thought through seven, and he says. I'm speaking to you that know the law. Are we going to then imply that the the heathen that we're talking about knew the law? Well, I already I mentioned that in Romans. He addresses two. The, the, the church was made up of Israelites and non-Israelites. So in the church, in writing, he dealt with Israelites like a chapter. Like if I write a book, I might deal with I might deal with these two guys in chapter three. He didn't write chapters though. He wrote a no, letter. 
No, I got it. No, I got it. But I'm just saying the chapters. We, I'm just breaking it down in this but, sense. But so I'm saying in a whole letter, I can address two groups of people and say, hey, Gentiles, hey, you Israelites. And I think that's what Paul was doing. Okay. I got you logic for sure. Yeah. So let's in that back. crowd, he was addressing let's them. Get, let's and then he dealt with the other right folks on. and said we were both brought near. It says, uh, hear this word that the Lord has spoken. This is Amos 3 and 1. Hear the words of the Lord. Sorry. Here, let's, this let's word. Let's walk this way a little bit because we got to get back to that car. Yeah. Well, I definitely want you to reach out. So, uh, and a lot of people get frustrated and then they no. run off and we can't finish the discussion. I do this, bro. I got a girl waiting on me with food. My birthday tomorrow, <laughs> all kind of stuff. I do this, bro. This ain't, I do this on T. I might be on, on with y'all inside. I'll be at work with y'all inside. I appreciate that, bro. That's important. I don't respect it the most Israelites. Go ahead and bring that out. Oh, where them flyers at? I just brought it. Oh shit. Oh, yeah. oh shit. Oh. Hey, <laughs> it says here, this is the word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I have brought up from the land sorry, of Egypt, saying, this verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquity. Which, which tells me, if we look at the biblical narrative, and we look at how God talks about how he's going to raise us up to be a light to the nation, uh -huh. we've been put in this position to do that. It tells me that we're the only people who have been near unto God, even if for a little bit of time. So if we go going they did do that. We're going to use reconciliation in proper terminology, ter uh, pro proper terms, then we have to honor its meaning, which is to bring back. Me and you agree that people need to be brought to God, but for them it's going to be the first time, and that doesn't fit the criteria. No, it doesn't. Of, yeah, dude. It was, it was just how that was with God before then. Because reconciliation means back. Now, would you Gentiles talk about... to come back to? Not, but, but Abraham but, was a Gentile. How did and his come, kids was Gentile. How do you come back to someone you were never with? That's the critical question we can't drop. Now, Abraham is an important place to start. But we, can, we can't have a conversation about Israelites without Noah, without Abraham, without Enoch. But here's the Nineveh, thing. All there, kind of people. The, the reason that, that the Israelites exist is because God chose a line. You go in the book of Luke and you read, that, you read that line that go back to Adam. Yeah. It goes straight from Adam to Israel. Yeah. But it goes through people like... But who was the ultimate point? It goes, it goes through people like Abraham. It goes through people like Noah to Shem to Abraham to uh, Isaac to mm -hmm. Israel, right? It's bloodline. So it's not just about being Israelite, it's about a chosen set of people. And it just so happens that the biblical narrative is centered around the Israelites and a man named Christ that comes out of the loins of Israel, primarily Judah. So we're not gonna argue that select quote unquote Gentiles or people groups that existed before the Israelites existed. Mm -hmm. Like we'll never argue against that. But all these people today, they don't come from Abraham. All these people today, they don't come from Isaac. And even if they did, there's still a chosen line. So what happens is the argumentation that, well, God dealt with people that wasn't Israelites before becomes rhetoric because he tells us that my name is going to be called through these people going forward. It did. Right? At so, first. And then, it, and then he united this. You made a point about Christ, and this this would be the last point. I know you got to get back to the car. In Galatians chapter three, he says, "Brothers, I speak in human terms, even though it is only a man's covenant. Yet when it has been ratified, no one set sets it aside or adds conditions to it." Ooh. Now the now the promises he's speaking of Abraham, not Israel. Watch this now. Now the now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say into seeds that would include Israel as referring to many but rather to one and to your seed that is christ so and what hold on and let me finish the rest of the text and what i am saying is this the law which came 430 years later does not invalidate a covenant previously ratified by god which is given to abraham mm -hmm. so as to abolish the promise for if the inheritance is by law it is no longer by promise but god has granted to abraham mm -hmm. through a promise and then it goes all the way down it says, those of you, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ. For as many of you have been baptized, not circumcised, baptized into Christ, you have 
it says you are um you have put on Christ. And then it says, there's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor free, for you are all one in Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham. Mm -hmm. You are, you are, if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's offspring according to the pro according to the promise, not according to the law. Yeah, 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 yeah. The promise was given to Abraham 430 years prior. Yeah, because so God's the, not going to just say something and not do it, right? So exactly. what he told Abraham was, I'm going to unite all nations in one body. Where, where does he say that? Right here. Just said Because all nations are going to be blessed through you is not. No, I ain't talking about. No, I'm not just talking about that. Okay. Right here. If, if I'm, if I'm a son of God, right? If this is talking to, in the context of Galatians chapter three, right? In this particular context, he's speaking of how people are brought near all nations right here. It says in verse eight and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles, the Gentiles, Gentiles by faith proclaim the gospel beforehand. This is before Israel. So you can't say that that's talking about an Israelite Gentile that was scared of the broad northern southern kingdom. Why he not? Was, because he, he said this beforehand. He's talking about Abraham. But right God here. also prophesied that the Israelites right. was going to break the law. But, but, the, but, those, but those people are not all nations. This says all the nations will be blessed in you. But, so but again, then, again, that's what I'm talking about. I'm saying it's that doesn't you. mean everybody going to be made I, one. No, I got you. Okay. But the whole context, he says all the nations will be blessed in you. So now we got to see what that blessing is. Okay. So then those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham, the believer. For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not abide by all things written in the law, which would uh -huh. be everybody. And the Jews failed that law. Book of the law to do them. Now that no now that no one is justified by the law before God is evident. For the righteous shall live by faith. This is apart from the law. He's uh -huh. contrasting. However, the law is not of faith. So he can't be speaking of that. Whoa. Rather, he who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse. He by hanging on the, the tree. curse of the law? Us. How do you get cursed by the law? You just read it. What do you mean? You the, just the, read it by not doing all things. Yeah, there, right? Yeah, right. Okay. But everybody was subject. But who was, everybody was subject. Who were the curses for? Because now the now curses you, was for Israel. But real quick, this is this is the cold part. One of the curses for Israel is that if you don't keep my law, uh -huh. the nations that are around you and used to be below you are gonna get up above you real high, which makes them suffering the same curse is impossible. But yeah. when you look at the bottom mm -hmm. of it, he continues in the Galatians 4 and no, qualifies No, hold on, let's deal with Galatians talking. 3. No, we, we got we to gotta go, though. Okay. So I want to combat your point real quick and say you got to read the connective tissue in between because in Galatians 4 and 4, he says this. He's talking to people that were under the law. Otherwise, we can't talk about the curses of the law. Because of the curses of the law, we're subject to people that God said would be our enemies as Israelites. So this dynamic exists. Our enemy is Satan. But, Everybody, but people, people we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He but, said, but the Canaanites said. were not spiritual beings; they were flesh. So we have to look at the. the he said the, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're, he's talking about with a certain with a certain context of subject matter. Yeah. our battle is a spiritual battle. Yes, but we have physical enemies, which is Where? why which which is why the Romans were. Who able are our to physical oppress. enemies today? The Romans were oppressing the Israelites, right? You mentioned 70 AD. Several nations were oppressing the There you go. You mentioned 70 AD. But that doesn't happen without physical enemies. But read this. Yeah, Galatians 4.4. They're not hunting us down. It says, but the fullness of the time has come. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, uh -huh. that we might receive the adoption of the son. So, uh -huh. so the connective tissue that bridges all this together is it? Yeah, he's saying all these things. Yeah, he's talking about birthrights. And so the conclusion of it um, becomes that so God sent forth his son in a certain time to redeem them that were under the law that we might redeem the adoption of the sons. Right. We, um, that's one. That's another whole point, though. It's not. It's the same that's thing. not. But, but we gonna, Abraham wasn't. Abraham, it just said that it's, it mentioned all nations, not just the nation mm -hmm. of Israel. And I brought out in Romans chapter 5 where he says everybody needed a savior and yeah. it was spread to all men. It says and all, Christ. It says all nations are going to be blessed through Israel. And he says that that blessing in, at the end of Galatians, he says in the, at the con conclusion of that, he says you are all the sons of your the sons of God through faith in Christ. You are all the sons of God through faith in 
Christ, and then it right? says your heirs according to the promise which is given to Abraham. Right, so right. those, those, so, all those nations who he said would be blessed so are Abraham, sons through faith so look, and are a part of Abraham's lineage look, through faith. Abraham's That's promise reason. was that his offspring were going to receive certain gifts. You read about Abraham's his offspring, right? He said they were going to bless all nations, though. Exactly. We're dealing with that one. Exactly. They're going to bless all nations. That doesn't mean every nation becomes a part of Israel. That's because what it says. we talked about. No, I don't. It don't. It, 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 it says that if, if I'm a son of God, it, I'm a part of Israel. It says that if, spiritually. It says that if you look at it with a preconceived notion, but if we adhere to prophecy, it does describe how all nations are going to be blessed because it says the law is going to go forth out of Jerusalem. And it I says it the did. world's going to be at peace. It says people are going to beat their swords into plowshares, but at the top of that, it says the people that came from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are going to be on top of that nation. Daniel tells us that the nation, the, 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 the dominion kingdom. will not be given unto other people. So, it is. Christ so, is ro ruling so, right now. So it's still talking about a certain dominion that a people group is going to have. Revelation tells us that they're going to rule in the earth. Followers of Yeshua. But it, it's not as obscure as followers of Yeshua. Because here's the conflict. Patient and faith of the saints dictates that we're waiting for people that led in the captivity to go into captivity. That killed with the sword to be killed with the sword. Everybody that believe in Jesus, the name of Jesus, don't want that. It's not, a, it's not about it's not about who believes to him to an extent. It's about who believes in him all the way. So the yeah. process of your nation is that. The, can't Israelites do that? And not Israelites do that? Yeah, they cannot believe. And what, they what can't I, believe. What I'm saying is that nobody that doesn't fill all of these gaps is going to fit the criteria and be able to rule with Christ. But what's the criteria? But the, but the other nation. Faith in Christ. I and, just read it. And reconciliation. No, you're 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 reconciled through faith. Uh, but reconciliation is a part of it. Whether, right. whether reconciliation, blessings, justification, all of that was pointed to all nations, according to Galatians 3 and Romans 5. But what? You said all nations were not with God. Nobody, everybody, Paul's point was everybody was sin. Everybody was sin. It says the law was a was a slave master. Why? Because the because the people who were given the law did not keep the law, which then imprisoned them to death. So the Messiah had to come, not only reconciling Israel and making them sons, to redeem but, them but, under the law. That they right, right, the right them, death. right. And then it also mentions in Galatians chapter three that all people are united through faith in Christ, which was given to Abraham to all the nations. Yeah, I'm gonna hey, you. I'm gonna get, get it, up, God. We was powers on this earth once, and we was all about the mirth once. Idol worship, murder, like the first of month, uh. Hit a nigga with the bit like he need a light. That's what you do when you want for it, or else you got a punt. But we ain't needed when we cry for Egypt flesh, nah. So it's Egypt that we got, and we hella mad. These crackers soaring off our shoulders like some hella pads. They see our sweat, but they don't feel us like we holograms. I'll be damned, another black man shot again. They deflect and tell us we are.